Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 8, Episode 5. This is a recap, so there will be spoilers. Let's get started. And if you would, please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe, because I really enjoy doing these with you. And now we will look at the participants and the self-portraits that they made that got them uh, um, to this program. And it's always fun to see how they present themselves in a the great variety of ways. So we have a really good field today. I left a little bit more time in this recap for the portraits. Sometimes I feel like I hurry through them and I want to give them the justice they deserve because they're they're just so darn good. Wow, I really like that one. Ooh, oh boy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I know I can't pick favorites yet, but there's something very clean about that. Oh, well, look at that. Wow. Oh my gosh. You know, some of these participants are so gosh darn young and they're so good already. It's going to be fascinating to see what they do with the rest of their lives. Because, you know, once you get the fundamentals down, then it becomes a challenge of, you know, style and, and what you want to present. You know, how you want to participate in the art world. What's your voice? That's a much harder question, I think, sometimes than, than the actual fundamentals. But of course, the fundamentals take years to develop too. Although, looking at these young people, uh, I would say it hasn't taken them as many years as it, as it certainly did me. But, uh, but time on task. Time on task will always make you better at whatever you do, be it painting or, or any other creative endeavor or really, any, anything that you, really anything you do at all. So if you're doing it and you enjoy it, keep doing it. Wow, look at that one. Certainly a Norman Rockwell reference, don't you think? All right, so our first participant, uh, not participant, our first model up is Kelly McDonald. She's an actress. She's a Scottish actress, and I think the first time she came to my notice was in, I believe, Train Spotting, which is not a upbeat film by any means, but I've been following her career for a long time, and I just, I just think she lights up a room. Four hours into the competition, it's not really four hours, but that's how much time they're officially given to paint. Uh, the artists turn their easels around and she gets her first look, as do we, of what they've done. And she's gonna pick one of these to go home, which will be an honor, but it doesn't have anything to do with the final judging of this particular program overall. Wow, look at that. That's a fantastic drawing, isn't it? It's just amazing to me that somebody can do that in four hours or, or just do it at all. Now, we haven't seen a lot of drawings selected for getting into the finals of this program, but um, not that it hasn't happened. It has happened. This one just blew my socks off because this is the kind of painting that I wish I could do. It's what I'm hoping to be able to do someday, and it's, and it's what I like the most. And for me, what it is is... It's like as if someone carved out the forms with the brush, simplified the forms, made the correct decisions, and then carved with a brush. So I think quite a bit of this is done with a flat brush. I, I do love a flat brush. Oh, and I love a square. So this is speaking to me. It doesn't have a lot of color value swap outs, but the color is really clean. There's not an overuse of titanium white. This is a real gem. This is the one that I would pick to choose to be in my home. Uh, but, uh, and I remember his self-portrait. He was sort of con looking downwards and contemplative, and I thought, oh, he, he stood out. You know, if someone stands out at the very beginning with their self-portrait, you have a pretty good idea that they'll do well on the program. Here's the next one. This is a much more painterly version, and I know people who watch the program hate the term painterly because the judges use it all the time. And what I mean by painterly, I'm not sure it's the same thing that they mean, but it just means that you can sort of see how the brush was applied. You can see the strokes that were done. You could almost like you can see the process behind it. Not that we don't know the other ones are painting, but this is sort of more feeling the energy of the artist because you can, you know, once you get to be a certain size in canvas, you know that you have to use big arm movements. These arm movements have to come from the shoulder, not from the elbow down. And that creates its own kind of energy and you have to really follow the forms with your brush otherwise you know you won't you won't get the roundness that you want so let's see which one Kelly's Kelly picks she's gonna pick one to go home and let's see ah this one yeah I would have picked that one too Ooh, that's a gem it's a gem 
Um, hashtag Joe is always wrong. Who knows how this person will do, but I think they're fantastic. So on to the next. The next up in terms of models is Hugh Skinner. He is a British actor. All our participants today are either actors or actresses, so they're all incredibly beautiful. <laughs> they're young with symmetrical faces, which is hard. You don't have a lot of character to dive into here, but you know, that's what the program is. So four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and we get our first look, as does Hugh. There's the first one. Um, I don't have a lot to say about this one. It's pretty monochromatic overall. You can see the drawing with the brush. See, there's a difference. See, I, I know what you're probably thinking. It's like, why doesn't Joe call this painterly? And because it's, it's really done like from the wrist down. It's, it's not using the elbow and it's not using the, um, you know, the arm. It's, it's a much more controlled piece in terms of what the artist did. It's also a pretty, pretty simple color mixing there, quite a bit of black in the painting. You know, from far away, it just doesn't read as, 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 as exciting a piece as I would like. And, and yet I thought his self-portrait was really pretty fantastic. Here's another one. This is the hardest for you, I think, when you get this one, which is the mug shot, you know, face straight on. Now I know if you're on the program, you can take your camera with you and move around the subject um, and, and choose how you want the subject presented. But, uh, but this person must have been right in front or chose this, I don't know. Here we come up close. That's the kind of detail you can only get if you're, if you're using your iPhone or an iPad as well. You're just not gonna get that from, you know, something like 10 feet away, which is what they are. And from far away, it reads really nicely from far away, so it would work well in a gallery. And remember, the final commission is a gallery piece, a 10,000 pound commission that's gonna hang in a gallery, not in a home. So it has to read from pretty far away. Here's the next one, which is an unusual presentation. And like I said, if you have the skills, then you know, your sort of next challenge is, well, what's your signature style? What are you gonna do with it? So this person has the device of sort of splitting the face up, and he did this, I believe, on his self-portrait as well, and, and just making things a little offset, so it's a little odd. It's a lovely piece from far away, and, um, you know, will the judges consider this? Yeah, I think they will, because they're looking for a very different, di different voices and different artists, so I think this is a strong contender. Not for me in my home, but for the program, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if this wins the episode, but... Uh, but hashtag Joe is always wrong. I think I said that already. Um, who knows? Hugh is going to pick one. Let's see which one he picks to take home. And he picks this one. That's interesting. Yeah. A lot of people who are extraordinarily beautiful pick portraits of themselves that aren't. I think they're used to seeing their perfect selves and get kind of tired of it. Oh, that'd be a nice problem to have. Anyway, Polly Walker is our next one up. She is an actress. Oh, yeah. I recognize her from different BBC dramas. All right, so let's see what the artists do with her today. You know, the backgrounds this season have been extremely simple. We haven't had a lot of, oh, I don't know, like stars, uh, stripes and wavy things and all of that. All right, here's the first one up. This one, uh, his self-portrait was pretty weak when it came up. So I was, you know, one of those times you kind of go, oh, this is a wild card. I don't know how this is going to go. It's pretty flat. Um, and doesn't have a lot of color saturation at all. So I, I don't know what they're going to do with this. For all I know, this will win the episode. I have no idea. But um, it, it's just somebody who's, who doesn't have as much experience as some of the other people who've shown up today. But good for him because he showed up and he did, got the job done, you know. Um, it takes real guts to do that. And it's a large piece. So that's... Um, he, he, he bit off a pretty ambitious thing to do today. All right, our next one up is a, a painting with much more saturated color and freeness in terms of this person. Wow, lots of interesting layering going on. Very distinct drawing and then layering. And I'm not sure what else is happening when it comes to applying the paint. It's very interesting. Yeah, oh, I love all the blues going on in there and the fluidity of what's happening. Really nicely done. Wow, that's a beautiful piece. I'm gonna have to look her up. I'm interested in seeing what else she's been doing since the program. And I believe this program was 2021. I better look that up and be sure before I, I really, really go too much further into this season. This is season eight. 
and this is episode six, but I think it's 2021. Now the last one up for this grouping is this one. This one looks much, uh, quite a bit like her, like the model. So that's a great representation. Wow, wow. A nice, you know, you get that three quarter view and you can get so much more information about the structure of the face. Yeah, that's beautifully done. Ooh, boy, the judges are gonna have a really hard time. There's so many that I think are worthy of going on. I would pick about five people to go forward. For me, there would never, there could never be a winner. There are too many, too many great paintings. And we get one more view from really far away. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, wow, that's a big piece. Wow, these people are so good. So impressed. What a what an amazing amount of uh, talent and work ethic they have over in the UK that keeps this program going. It just gets better and better and better. Let's see which one Polly picks. And she picks this one. Wow, yeah, I, I would pick that one too. It's beautiful. All right, so now we get to the final judging. Now in the final judging, it's been an incredibly long day. You've had to get to the venue. You've been painting for four hours. You had a lunch break. You've been interviewed. It must be crazy exhausting. And only three of these people will be selected to go on to the finals of this particular program. Let's see who they are. Okay, this was the first one. This was a very painterly approach, which I really did like from our first model, who was Kelly McDonald. So, um, Oh boy, that's a, oh boy, this is going to be a tough judging. I would put her through. Wow, this one too. Yeah, absolutely agree. Oh, this is going to be impossible. This can be, it's going to be, it, it is impossible. Oh, this is, so we have two really good contenders so far. Oh, and this one, which I absolutely adore beyond words. So I don't know which one I know which one I would pick, but I don't know what the judges are going to do, and I'm not going to blame them in any case because this is an impossible choice. But what happens now is now we get to the final judging, and we get to see the three different participants. There they are with what they did today, and in just a second we get to our my favorite part of the program is we get to see who, uh, their self-portrait next to what they did today. So there's the self-portrait. Wow, that is so clean. That is just so clean. There's nothing, nothing there that isn't necessary. And that is just so carefully designed. Look at the negative space around a self-portrait. That's just as fascinating as, as a self-portrait itself. Wow, okay. Oh, and this one. Oh my gosh, these are too good. These are too good. I... I'm speechless. Oh, but not completely speechless because that's what I'm here to do. There is a difference between what she did when she had more time and what she did today, but in a positive way. I think both are really, really strong. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, so the one on the left is one where she had time and the one today she had only four hours. Wow, I think she did a spectacular job in that short amount of time. That is really surprising to me. That's what I'm looking for in any artist's career is like consistency over time because you want a signature style. Lots of times people will commission you because they want your painting because they've looked at your style. And so, you know, it has to have a signature, has to be different, kind of like signature style because it's just the same as, uh, you know, when you sign your name on a check. The winner is, dun 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 dun, dun this one. Yay, I love this one. You know, it looks so simple, and it's so hard to make this simple, because in order to make this simple, it means that the individual strokes that you make have to be really, really, really precise, without it looking labored, and without it looking like you, um, you know, you were tight, and it has a looseness and a freedom to it. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.